Howdy y'all, welcome back, thank you for being here. Today, we're going to look at some incredible photographs. What profound visual stimuli could be captured as the first photographers entered the longest cave in the entire world in the year 1889? Equipped with fledgling technology, it was the cutting edge of proper documentation of the largest subterranean oasis known to man. These late 19th century explorers, scientists, and historians sought to bring the seemingly never-ending expanse of this cave to global limelight, producing what are described as, quote, the best specimens of subterranean photography yet produced as of 1893, end quote. However, our collection today, with images dated from 1889 through 1892, was not the first foray into documenting the expanse of this cave through photography, but it was the first to utilize magnesium lighting, which allowed for the clear, and well-lit photographs of this miraculous underground metropolis. Today, we will look at the first photographs of the Mammoth Cave taken using magnesium lighting, allowing for the first images of the cave proper. Worth note here, the Mammoth Cave, contained mostly in South Central Kentucky, stretches for at least 426 miles, and that is only from what has been discovered so far, with new chambers seemingly being founded every handful of years. The 426 miles in length makes Mammoth Cave one and a half times longer than the next longest cave in the world, the Sac Octon in Mexico. However, the real meat and potatoes of this video and the most intriguing aspect is perhaps the names of the different locations, monuments, and man-made structures within the Mammoth Cave. As you'll come to find, and I have included the title for each image as well as the overall reference cover page from when these images were first published in 1893. But what you'll notice very quickly is that just about every structure or formation in the cave is named as if it was once a living thing or as if it were man-made. Again, I've covered this a lot on my channel in other locations from mountain ranges known as the Fallen Giant to rock formations known as Elephant Rock to massive, quote-unquote, naturally occurring geology, which resembles petrified things like tree stumps. We've been through an abundance of history, which makes it clear that our ancestors, even as recently as 200 years ago, very much still believed in the supernatural and the unexplainable, as echoed in the titles of these locations here in the Mammoth Cave. Today, a slew of different explanations are given, but nearly all of them land on the fact that these names are tongue-in-cheek references to what the formations look like and in no way represent what the historians at this time actually believed. Yet it does make you think, and I've honestly not seen a better example of that than here in the Mammoth Cave in Kentucky. In this narrative, we will see unexplainable things photographed and named such as the Giant's Coffin, the Gothic Avenue, Martha Washington statue, the Bacon Chambers, and the Pillars of Hercules, just to name a few. There's also a multitude of different flowing bodies of water within the Mammoth Cave, including the River Styx and the Dead Sea. We also have actual, confirmed, man-made construction, fortified stone cottages, and what appear to be living quarters, all constructed in the Mammoth Cave, miles underground. Mind you, all of this happening, these photographs in the late 1800s, meaning everything you see in the cave appears to have been there for quite a while. Even this man-made construction looks rather ancient. I have no idea. I mean, I've been to caves before, and some of them rather recently. As soon as you're several hundred feet into a cave, just about everything goes pitch black. Granted, when you're in these caves, if you're on a tour or if you have a chance to run experiments yourself using a flashlight or another light like an iPhone, this actually does very little to light the entire cave. Fire also has a very similar output with little to no actual usable light being given off. You can basically see in front of you and that's about it. So to imagine, before the use of electricity, men hiking miles into the Mammoth Cave 
with just their torches and then constructing any sort of architecture, an actual house or a retreat inside this endless darkness of a cave, that's a pretty miraculous thing for us to contemplate. And what makes it even more intriguing is we are told in the current narrative, even to this day, indigenous mummies are being discovered throughout the Mammoth Cave. This leads to a whole other wormhole, which is actually quite hard for us to figure out an answer for. In the narrative, we're told that these caves have been occupied since at least 5,000 years ago, with numerous mummies being found dated from roughly that time period and onward. According to modern scholars, we're told that the archaic woodland people also occupied this cave, and they seem to fall in between chronologically the mound builders and modern indigenous people. The woodlanders are said to have ventured into the cave to conduct elaborate burial rituals which involve the mummification of the deceased. What's interesting here, in modern times, we're also told that Mammoth Cave is home to one of the most major locations for what is called experimental archaeology. In a nutshell, scholars can't exactly figure out how the woodland people and other indigenous people utilize miles of the Mammoth Cave system without proper lighting. So on a seemingly regular basis, researchers are sent into the cave using only the tools the indigenous people would have had to try to recreate the exploration of the cave. To this day, we mostly only have theories as to how the Mammoth Cave was occupied and developed by the indigenous people. But at the same time, we're also told a bulk of these formations, about 99% of what we see in the photographs today, are naturally occurring. While the names of the locations and the formations in Mammoth Cave appear to indicate otherwise, this is now discredited in the current narrative by saying that these geological features have maintained their erroneous original titles as given to them by the first major guide to the Mammoth Cave, an enslaved genius by the name of Stephen Bishop, who was regarded as an expert on the Mammoth Cave and who drew the first accurate map of the Mammoth Cave in the 1840s, which was then reproduced in scientific communities for the next 40 years. Stephen Bishop was said to have explored the cave system by himself, drawing his map and learning the intricacies and secrets of the Mammoth Cave before teaching them to the public. We're also told that Mammoth Cave was once home to one of the largest saltpeter mines in Kentucky history, as illustrated in a handful of these photographs, where we see absolutely ancient looking piping running through different portions of the cave. Overall, it appears through these photographs, if we just look at them and not the narrative, the Mammoth Cave was once home to a vast multitude of different formations and creations, many appearing to have literally grown or been petrified, possibly cut, into the surrounding stone. Yet the theory has little merit today, as the current narrative tells us that everything we see is naturally occurring rock, and it was only erroneously named and then exploited for profit by a few individuals before this massive cave was then taken over by the government and quote, properly documented, and the history of the human occupation of the Mammoth Cave was all but forgotten. Yet the photographs here speak for themselves, and each image says more than 1,000 words. And for the better part of the last two centuries, the Mammoth Cave was considered one of the most mysterious and mythical places on Earth. But I'd love to hear what you think in the comment section down below. I can't wait to get into this discussion with you. This is a location that I would love to visit in my lifetime. If you have been there before, I would love to hear about it. And we will talk about this more on the next video.